In a survey this week on YouTube, 97% of you told me that you just love making your own decorations and ephemera. So in this week's video, we're making quick and easy envelopes out of old book pages so that you can use your own paper stash, your own pile of book pages to make something beautiful and useful and get a creative buzz at the same time. And if, like me, you have a passion for paper, you just love playing with junk and art journals, then hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell and come back next week because I have lots more videos and ideas to come. This technique for making envelopes has two key benefits. Firstly, it's just really easy. Secondly, you don't need an envelope template. You can even do this without a scoreboard, although it does speed things up. I have this wooden scoreboard. I also have a plastic one, and I've tried making these envelopes with both of them, and I keep coming back to the wooden one. And the reason I like the wooden one more is oh, because of the nature of the creases that you get in the paper. But I would very much like your opinion if you have either a wooden one or a plastic one, what do you think of it? Let me know. Drop a comment down below. So what you need ideally is a scoreboard of some type. In an ideal world you'd have some form of bone folder but you could always use a ruler or even the back of your, your nail. You want some paper and I'll talk through a few examples in a minute. You want some glue and you can use either the little sticks of glue or you could use a more liquid one. I use a liquid one, I just prefer it and this just came from a, a local shop. And you also need, for the envelope itself, you need some double-sided tape. I've put some washi tape on here because you may like to decorate your envelope on the back with a little washi. So that's all you need to make an envelope. Just a, a little moment on the types of paper then. How glorious it would be to receive an envelope made of beautiful vintage music paper. So you could either make the envelope entirely out of music paper or you could cut pieces and put it on to the envelope to decorate it. I use old local maps so this has a vintagey feel to the paper. I've got some examples of a whiter page so this is a an old dictionary, a really large, one of those great big weighty tomes that you get. You can of course use other forms of book pages and this is glossy paper with beautiful natural wildlife botanical pictures. So I've used pages like this and it's quite thick as well which lends itself very well to making envelopes. I use larger pieces of matte paper. I've used really curious shapes and sizes to make these envelopes and I'll show you an example later. So a very long tall page from a book about Germany. You could use very colourful pages. So this is a page from uh, an old children's book. This is more vintagey feel, larger sheets, a little bit more aged in look with small font. That's really nice to use. I've got some little pages here from a thick how-to guide. I've made envelopes out of that. Another example of a glossy sheet. So all of these would work well for making envelopes. I just wanted to give you a feel at this stage of how you can raid your paper stash to make envelopes and have fun. So let's make an envelope and as I do so I will do my very best to talk through this with as much clarity as possible and I've also got some top tips for getting the most out of this technique after the demonstration. I'll give you the overall approach to begin with and then we'll do a few examples. What we're going to do is create a margin on either side of the page by scoring. We're going to score across at the bottom and we'll fold that up. We're going to score across towards the top and fold that down and the principle is that obviously the top and the bottom when they fold need to overlap and I would recommend an overlap of about two centimetres. Then we're going to make some cuts and the cuts will make it possible to just do some really easy gluing to bring the envelope together. So let's have a go at that. So first of all we're going to score some margins on the page. So I just choose the first indentation on the scoreboard and despite the fact that I've just ripped the page out of the book it doesn't matter there's a little bit of tat it might not be perfectly straight I'm just going to butt that up across the side 
and I'm going to score down and I'm being quite careful to not press too hard that to go through the paper. Maybe what you want to do is score gently two or three times and we'll just turn that round and do exactly the same on the first indentation, so the same indentation lengthwise. Two or three little runs down. You can see how a, a bone folder is useful for the scoring as well. Then I'm going to score at a point on the board, in this case three indentations up, that will allow me when folded up to have a top that overlaps by about two centimetres. So let's just do that. So again, gentle scoring, easier to do two or three than to press hard once and go through the page. Turn it round and on this occasion I've worked out that I can use the second crease because when it's folded the top will overlap at the folded up bottom by about two centimetres. So I've now got a scored piece of paper. Let me just set the board aside and do some folding and I hope all will become apparent. So fold in the sides and let's make that a really nice crease because that will help. And actually when you are folding and creasing, one tip is start with your bone folder from the middle and score outwards. And the reason we want to do that is if you start at one end and there's a little bit of error, you're going to take that error all the way across and end up with a line that isn't straight, a fold that isn't neat for you. So start from the middle and, and score outwards. And let's just find that crease that we made at the bottom, fold the page up and make that a nice crease and at the top fold in just make that a nice crease so far so good so we've got a page with a crease on either side lengthwise a crease at the bottom and a crease at the top and when I fold that over the top is overlapping the bottom by about two centimeters it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be absolutely accurate now let's do the cutting before we do the gluing and I've decided on this page that I quite like the pictures and the positioning of the pictures is useful what I'm going to do is have this pretty little green picture on the outside of my envelope and I'm going to cut so that I can then glue the sides so the first cut I'm going to do is at the bottom of the page and I'm going to go absolutely just next to the crease at the bottom of this page. So what I'm doing is cutting up to where the two creases here come together as a little cross. So just to say that again, I'm going just to the left of the crease inside it and I've cut a straight line up to that midpoint of those two creases. Turn the page around and I'm going to cut just to the right of the crease that we'd made, make a point at the centre and take that piece out. Let's just do the absolute opposite symmetrically from the other side. So again, just on the inside of the crease that you made, cut a straight line and we're going to go up to that fold in either direction and I'm going to go just to the left, so just higher than the crease that we made. And I don't need those two bits, get rid of those. So now what I've got is the bottom piece ready to fold up. Let's do the top and it's a little bit different. What I want to do is cut about a centimetre to the left of this crease and I'm going to go to this midpoint of the two folds. So let's just straight line as straight as you can, doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to cut on the side and this time I'm going to also cut a centimetre to the right of the fold. So the difference between cutting at the top and cutting at the bottom is how far away from those creases you begin. So we'll do exactly the same on the other side. From about a centimetre we're going to cut to the midpoint of that crease and from here we're going to cut to the left of that crease. And the reason the cuts are different are we want a little bit of an envelope shape to the top but we want as much robustness at the bottom. So I retain some at the bottom and I cut a bit more away at the top. So now let's do a little bit of gluing. We are going to 
fold the outside flaps in which go in very neatly now because we cut away a little bit at the bottom you can see why we did that we cut away a little bit at the bottom not very much just a little bit and at the top there's a bigger gradient because we made it a cut a little bit more away at the top so the first thing I'm going to do is put glue on this bottom piece not up here I'll explain why in a second so just put a little bit of glue on the edge of this flap one on either side uh, and what I'm doing is not starting with the glue absolutely at the edge of this crease and the reason I do that is I don't want to actually glue this to any of the inside so move your flaps in and fold this up and because we put the glue on the bottom flap rather than on these flaps at the side you won't have put glue too far up a bit coming out you won't have put glue too far up here if you put your glue on the flaps that you fold in you're gonna to have to guess how far up to go so in this way I get as neat a set of gluing as possible with minimum risk of it sticking in the wrong places and now we've got a cute little envelope in this case with a picture in a very appropriate space on the front and all I would then do is put some double-sided tape around the envelope and you'll find that because we had an overlap when you fold the top flap down the little two-sided the double-sided tape will be in the right place so that's an example of an envelope I wondered if you might want me to just do that a second time uh, and by the way last weekend when I bought some old books from a charity shop I just decided this was a useful one to play with so I just did really quickly and you can definitely do the same a whole load of envelopes and it just works that the picture comes in the middle which is quite cute so let's have a go at one more just to help and show how really really easy it is tips to get the most out of this technique. We talked earlier about using glossy paper because you get nice creases in the envelope but you can also use much more absorbent pieces of paper because they work really well if you want to stamp and paint on them. So a couple of examples here all I've done is just using this large wooden stamp block I've stamped across the corner of the envelopes and then I've just taken some paints and done a really rough and easy bit of painting into the leaves uh, and the berries. So just to bring a little bit of decoration to some of these envelopes, you can add another layer of decoration to them. You might also want to make a whole set of them as a present, so that would work really well. And you could use, if you make postcards, the size of the postcard could be used as a template to help you design an envelope of the right size. So think about using some of your other craft activities to work and complement with the envelope. If you've got a book with some really wide pages, we can still do something incredibly useful with that. So these are examples of envelopes that have been made with a really, really wide book. As you can imagine, with the flaps in addition, you've got a really wide page. And what these work really well as are pages themselves in a signature. So imagine them folded over and you could either use them as a pocket to tuck things into or you could cut off the ends and then tuck into it. So think about using every shape and size of piece of paper that you have in your stash to have some fun with. 
Um, and finally, my suggestion would be just have a go, have a play, mix around and use different pages that you've got and then decide what you like. I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough and demonstration of how to make some really easy envelopes for your craft and your junk journal projects. If you've enjoyed this then do please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and I really look forward to seeing you next week with another video. Bye!